All right. Welcome, folks. We'll just wait a second or three while our participants are joining us. So glad to have you all with us this evening. It looks like our number is, is stabilized in terms of our attendees. So really glad to welcome everyone. Glad you're here for this evening's Parent and Family Forum. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Lassan, and I'm the Senior Associate Director for Parent Engagement. And before we begin, let me share a few logistical items. The session will operate much like a webinar. We've taken the questions submitted by you in advance and built them into our panelists' remarks. In addition, Abby Kale, Associate Director of Alumni and Parent Engagement, will be monitoring additional questions submitted via the Q&A tab and making sure those questions get to our panelists. The microphone on your computer will not be active during this meeting. Abby and I will also serve as our technical support this evening. You can use the same Q&A function if you're having technical difficulties as well, and we will be in touch with you to help by phone. Our conversation this evening will be moderated by Dr. Olivia Munoz. We're also joined by a fantastic panel of student affairs professionals from both our Portland and Salem campuses. Our panelists are excited to share information about their programs with a focus on programming support and access for our first year students. Now I'll introduce our moderator this evening. Dr. Munoz is an in interdisciplinary student affairs professional with more than 10 years experience in student support, residential education, and social justice programming. Prior to serving in her current role as Dean of Students for Community Care and Inclusion on our Salem campus, Oli served as the Associate Dean of Students at the Pacific Northwest College of Art in Portland and as the Director of Residential Life at Mills College in Oakland, California. She has twice served on the student life team for the study abroad program semester at sea. Her experience includes student activism, development, support for undocumented students and first generation scholars and community partnerships with arts, immigrant and Latinx nonprofits. Thanks Oli for leading this evening's forum and I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you so much, Eric. Welcome, everyone. Um, welcome to this really, really great uh, panel of folks who are dedicated um, staff members in support of your students at Willamette University. I want to just take a moment to go over this beginning part of the school year, and that's to take you through a little bit of a visioning. So if you will imagine some very, very hot days, that was the reality for our orientation, but those days really included a lot of fun, a lot of connection with students, some programs that were really meant to get the students connected to the campus um, and to each other. So lots of, lots of work went into really welcoming students to our two campuses, both at PNCA and here in Salem. And I wanna thank everyone uh, on this panel who worked really hard to do that. Um, there's been lots of fun down by the mill stream throughout the city of Portland and lots of different places in between. And so we're happy to share all of the great things that we've been doing in preparation for the students and welcoming them to their educational journey at Willamette University. Um, I'll go over a little bit of what's under my purview um, and each panelist will introduce themselves in their section. We'll have some Q&A time at the end. And so please feel free to put those questions into the Q&A chat um, or hold on to them at the end. So as Eric mentioned, I'm the Dean of Students for Community Care and Inclusion and have um, some broad oversight and work with a lot of folks to really carry out care and inclusion programming and support for students on campus. Um, that includes individual student care response, um, helping to manage our basic needs such as food pantry, a book drive and professional clothing for students to use for interviews or for first jobs, coordinating um, Title IX and responses to sexual misconduct situations, overseeing the Office of Multicultural Affairs and our Center for Equity and Empowerment, working with um, 
the director at the Gender Resource and Advocacy Center and providing resources for things like bias, bias incidents, um, support for undocumented students and other inclusion efforts. Next slide. So I mentioned our Multicultural Affairs and our Student Center for Equity and Empowerment. Um, I wanna just say that we're commemorating 10 years of this center uh, being at Willamette. Certainly multicultural affairs and efforts have been going on longer than that, um, but the Student Center for Equity and Empowerment is turning 10 years. Um, housed within that is a pre-orientation program and ongoing mentoring programs that really seek to support students of color and first-generation college students, helping them connect to their peers, connecting them to older, um, older students who lend that peer support in their, in their journey at Willamette. We also support student organizations that have a particular identity or cultural foundation um, and coordinate campus-wide heritage celebrations, things like Latinx Heritage Month, Black History Month, Indigenous Peoples Day, and other, other commemorations. We also help celebrate the graduates at the end of the school year, folks who are first gen, students of color, and all of the different schools that Willamette represents and have a lot of different supports and informal gathering space or lounge space for students to hang out in the center um, physically or come for different educational opportunities, um, use the lending library, have lunch, connect with their peers, things like that. And so I'll turn it over to our next person. Don Thompson. That would be me. Good evening, everybody. So I'm Don Thompson. I use he, him pronouns. I am the Associate Dean for Health and Wellbeing and the Director of Bishop Wellness Center. Um, I've been asked just to give just a brief update around COVID and, and a little bit uh, on just where we are with our student health and counseling services here this year. Um, so generally speaking, let me just say our students are very excited for this experience. I think this, uh, it, it and just talking with some colleagues, I think there's a, a general feeling that there's there's excitement among our first year students for just being back in person on, on all campuses. And there's there's just, you know, I'm, I'm mindful if, if your student was you take the traditional route through uh, high school and then in, into Willamette or PNCA, their, their sophomore year of college, or excuse me, of uh, high school was when COVID hit, the spring of 2020, it was their sophomore year of college, or dang it, twice high school, um, which and if we think about just all that happens in sophomore, junior and senior years of high school and just how fundamentally interrupted that was for our students, our first year students this year, um, it's just their excitement is palpable. I, I, I see, it's just lovely to see folks hanging out in the common spaces in the 511 building and, and around the mill stream. It's just it's just lovely. So lots and lots of excitement around that. Um, I will also say uh, that for a lot of reasons, right, we've got increased immunity from uh, high vaccination rates and, and uh, prior infections. We've got therapeutics available for the most vulnerable. Um, we've got, uh, we are fundamentally at a different place with COVID. And what that means is we saw in August a pretty significant shift from the CDC um, really toward uh, learning as a as a country to live with COVID rather than responding to COVID as a crisis all the time. Um, and really we saw a shift in the CDC guidance around uh, really a movement towards individual assessment of risk and, and taking whatever steps make sense for you uh, to mitigate that risk. So that's been a pretty, pretty important shift uh, this year when compared to the previous two. I think there was a lot more sort of governments and institutional sort of regulation of those things uh, in prior years, and um, we are fortunately at a place uh, now where we can rely on other metrics there. Um, so again, I think all of that is leading to, I think, just student excitement about being back in person. Um, I know we had a few questions in uh, the Q&A beforehand about uh, the new Omicron boosters, which became available uh, about a week and a half ago. Oregon started to get their shipments last week. Um, the, the question about whether or not they're going to be specifically offered on campus. Um, unfortunately, our health and counseling center, our health clinic is just 
way too small to be considered in the Oregon Health Authority's vaccine distribution plan. So they're focusing on the major distribution hubs, big retail chains, um, hospitals, county health departments, and whatnot. So we actually did send out uh, messaging earlier this week to all of campus, including students, um, about where to get these new Omicron-specific uh, boosters. And there are a number of places proximate to both campuses. I know there's a CVS pharmacy close to PNCA, Safeways within walking distance of, of the Salem campus, for especially for our first-year students. Um, and both have uh, both have COVID boosters available. Um, there was also a question about flu shots. Uh, we do have on the Salem campus flu shots available, um, and students can just make an appointment now. We have them available now. Um, and again, there are also lots of places uh, in the community where, where those are available. Um, other updates, I think, from health and counseling that Merritt mentioned, very high utilization in the counseling center across uh, across all campuses. So yes, the excitement is back. Um, and the flip side to that excitement is just a lot of there's students have not really had a whole lot of practice navigating the social stuff in the last couple of years, right? I mean, there's just so much remote learning and whatnot that has happened. Uh, the transition's hard. And so we're being really intentional in offering support for our students um, in, in su supporting their wellness and mental health. So lots of appointments uh, in the counseling center. I will end with, um, we just added some additional counseling support. Uh, we have contracted with a company called You Will, which it actually has no affiliation with Willamette University as a total coincidence, um, but we contracted with a company called You Will. Um, every student, in addition, in addition to the free and uh, confidential counseling supports that they're able to get through my office, um, they have uh, they can get eight free and confidential counseling uh, appointments every academic year. Um, those are offered via telehealth, obviously, because these are remote uh, clinicians offering the service. But it is an additional support. Um, that is that is free to our students. Um, and again, that just launched uh, this just this last week. Um, I'll put this uh, in the chat if folks are interested. You can see some more information about what that program is and, and how to uh, access it for your student. But just really excited that there are just some additional supports available. So I'll stop there and uh, turn it over to the next person. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Holliday, Associate Dean of Students. I work in the Student Engagement and Leadership Office. I use she, her pronouns, and I completely agree with what Dawn said about we've had a fabulous start to the academic year, lots of enthusiasm, lots of student engagement, and it's really an exciting time to be on campus. Um, so I know I can speak for the SEAL office and saying that um, we are looking forward to all that uh, will come this semester because of that engagement and enthusiasm. So I wanna talk a little bit about a couple areas of opportunity for students who are on the Salem campus. Uh, first, um, in regard to community service learning, I, I believe a lot of you know that Willamette, we're known for our commitment to service. It's, it's part of our university motto. And uh, we have an office on campus called Community Service Learning that oversees those efforts. And so I wanted to share a little bit about what's available to students in case you have a student that has a history of community service in high school or an interest, or maybe they have um, a desire to start doing community service. And we provide a lot of opportunities for that um, through our service Saturdays, which are weekly one-time service events. We also offer some ongoing opportunities. Uh, one program in particular that's been popular for a long time is Tiger Club. It's an after-school program that we offer at the elementary school across the street from campus. And we also have a similar partnership um, with the Friendship, Friendship Brigade, um, which is a City of Salem 50 plus partnership. And we partner with a local assisted living facility and our students have been um, working there the last couple of years um, as volunteers. Um, so those are just some of the opportunities that we have in community service. We offer a weekly newsletter that students can sign up for if they wanna know about these opportunities as well as just quick uh, one-time opportunities in the community as well. Um, and then we also have a lot of information on the community service learning webpage, which is listed there. 
Another opportunity, um, I advise the Collegian, which is our student newspaper. We have lots of paid leadership positions for students who have an interest in the student newspaper. Uh, we also are in the process of, students are in the process of restarting our radio, which I should add. Um, so that's not currently listed on our our list of student organizations, but we expect our radio to be back and working very soon. But if your students are interested in journalism, um, the newspaper, those positions are all listed on Handshake, um, great opportunity. And you as families, if you are interested in staying in touch with what's going on on campus, um, our newspaper is predominantly online, and there's an opportunity on their website where you can sign up for a weekly newsletter um, so that you can get a summary of the different articles that have been written um, throughout that week. So that's a great way to stay in touch with, with what's happening at Willamette. So those are just a few opportunities for your students on the Salem campus. And I will pass it off to the next person. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Kelvin Clark, and I serve as the Associate Dean of Students at the Pacific Northwest College of Art, which is Willamette's newest college. As the Associate Dean, I oversee the Office of Student Affairs, made up of three additional staff members. You'll meet one of them momentarily. And we focus on five primary areas of student development, well-being, student engagement and leadership, intercultural inclusion and learning, residence life, and community development. Our primary goal is to help students use their talents and their drives to not only increase our campus, but also develop and to create a better world as well. Ways that our students can get involved, starting right where with our office. We have two student councils, so undergraduates, and if your students stay with us, they'll serve on the graduate council as well. And these are both paid positions. We have a host of clubs and organizations going from adventure clubs to a zine club to Frank's ukulele club. And with our, our club fair coming up tomorrow, we're going to add a couple of more to it. We are currently searching for office workers. Uh, so some will work with student life, with clubs and organizations. Some will work with our inclusion activities and some will actually serve as desk assistants in our art house. Now, when it comes to Art House, which is our residence hall that we prioritize first year housing, as Lisa and Don says, we have been bustling with activity. Impromptu pasta nights happened last night. There was an art trade where students decided to trade their skills with one another. So the painter painted and the drawer drew opposite people. Something that I can't stop laughing at is the fur bunny. So the students brought their favorite fur babies down and created new things from that. And upcoming, we'll be having a volunteer night thinking about our houseless populations that exist. Now, students can also serve as resident advisors. This is something that I did and as an undergrad, and this is why I'm actually in higher education today, the opportunity to come back and serve your peers, both as educational mentors and also as role models. Something new that we have done with the merge is we've had some cross-campus collaborations. New student orientation was an example of that. We brought our first year PNCA transfer and first year students down to Salem and got to explore the Halley Ford Museum, just as well as participate in matriculation. But we're not stopping just at orientation. We're gonna look at ways to continue our cross-campus collaborations. We have a couple of outdoor adventure clubs, uh, activities where we're taking our students to Clear Lake to go, sorry, to go kayaking. And we're going up to Dog Mountain and the Columbia River Gorge for some hiking. But we're not gonna stop there either, y'all. We will have our rivals, Lewis and Clark, which is also located in Portland. And we're gonna take some of our students to some volleyball games, football games, and some women's soccer games as well. But then when I think about uh, beginning this year again, there are populations that are new to our community. So thinking about transfer students, while they may have an understanding of what other institutions are, this is their first time here at PNCA. So we're gonna bring them together and have them talk to former transfer students. What was the process? What were the transitional issues? What's the good stuff? What's the bad stuff? What's the ugly stuff? So on and so forth. And the same thing with students who are the first in their families to go to college. I know I was. And it's an overwhelming experience. You're worried about how good you're going to be compared to other people, but you're also representing all the people who are standing on your shoulders as well. Uh, and that's your family. So exactly how did other former first-gen students navigate and how are they successful? So similar to what Dean Holiday said, checking email is definitely a way to stay abreast. And I would encourage before class, lunch, and when all classes are done. And something that we're starting new is our monthly newsletter from Student Affairs. So all of the different activities that we have. So thank you, and we'll pass it on to the next person.
Thanks, Calvin. My name is Heather. I use she, her pronouns. I serve as the Director of Residence Life and Student Conduct. Um, it is so good to have a record number of students here at Salem and also PNCA. We're so happy um, to have all of your students with us. I, I'm a little bit of a nerdy type person and love reading a lot about residence halls and how students learn. And what I want to start is to say that um, residence uh, research shares that students who live on campus at least one year, they have higher GPAs, they graduate at faster rates, um, they retained at higher rates to campus, they have more social connections, they have more time in their schedules um, than those students that live off campus. These are only a few benefits, but that is why we have at minimum a first year live on requirement um, at PNCA and here at Salem, we have a two year live on requirement for our students. Um, research also says that students, we can move them into a residence hall and we can do nothing and they will still learn, but that is not how we engage um, the students that you have, that, that you have entrusted us with. Um, Calvin shared a little bit about um, Art House, which has been really awesome to have our new area coordinator M there. And what I'll say in addition to what Calvin said is that we believe in creating spaces where students feel like they matter and that they belong. And so currently your students who are living with us have already completed a roommate agreement with the person that they're living with um, that talks a little bit about their preferences and how they want to live together um, and a little bit more um, talking through some of the things that could be proactive and potentially uh, disagreements that might happen. They've also had community gatherings or where their resident advisor facilitated um, an opportunity for them to share about what a resident advisor is get to know people that are in their community and create community expectations to hold each other accountable as a lot of times this is the first time that someone has actually shared a room with someone or um, been in a community that's outside of their support systems at home. Our resident advisors also here at the Salem campus um, and I believe at PNCA are also hosting different social gatherings so Calvin shared a few things here at Salem I know some of the students are doing board game nights they, they're eating dinner together going to the Saturday market. Um, and we ask RAs to facilitate one type of those engagement opportunities per week. So there's something for all of your students to do every week. Um, our resident advisors are supervised by our area coordinators who are full-time live-in staff. They plan large scale social and educational events and they do a lot of work to connect with students one-on-one -on -one to ensure that they are being successful in their academics, that they're connected to resources and that they feel like they're supported and that they matter. If your student has told you a little bit about, I don't know how to get involved or just something that they might wanna meet new friends, we have Residence Hall Association, which is uh, our student government within our residence halls. They meet every Wednesday at 4.30. They just had their meeting today. And it's a really great opportunity for students who might be involved, wanting to get involved to plan different types of events in their community, as well as um, figure out, they, they have budgets for hall improvements. So figure out how they want to invest in their hall to make it better. What I always love telling um, support systems is you can help us so greatly by just talking with your students about their experience and encouraging your students to problem solve, encourage your students to consider different perspectives and different solutions, and always encourage them to connect with our resident advisors and our area coordinators. And if you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Housing at Willamette.edu for the Salem campus. And we have a brand new email address for the PNCA campus. It's arthouse dash info at willamette.edu and I will put that in the in the chat for you but thank you and I think Malavika is next. Thanks Heather. My name is Malavika. I use she, her, and they, them pronouns and I'm the assistant director for inclusion and intercultural engagement at PNCA. Um, real quick I want to give context for the photo. I think my cat is more popular than I am on the PNCA campus thanks to our newsletter. I featured her in there and I've already had some students tell me oh my gosh I saw your cat. She's so cute so I figured if if you are trying to talk to your student about me the photo the cat photo is going to help more than my name. Um, but yeah my name is Paul Vika. I'm new to, to PNCA and Willamette but really excited to be here. Um, so in my role, I do a bunch of different things. So um, working a lot through programming, working on Heritage and Awareness Month celebrations. So like now starting tomorrow, it's Latinx Heritage Month. So working on programs for that, um, including we're like trying to do this big social coming up uh, as well as encouraging students to go to events that are already happening in Portland because Portland is um, really busy with it all. Um, and then 
also conducting workshops on identity, conflict, bias. I've been talking to faculty about what students need in terms of self-care in their class, um, talking about students kind of coming to terms with the fact that they have to talk about their identity in relation to their art in class and how they can talk about it. So all of that, go, I'm planning on doing workshops and working on them already um, in terms of programming. And on top of that, advocacy and support, I'm available for like mediation, facilitation around identities, whether that's peer to peer, whether that a student is feeling uncomfortable around a faculty or staff member and they just need another person in the room while they're having that conversation. I'm available to do that as well as the rest of my office. Um, working on affinity groups, uh, trying to kind of revamp them because COVID kind of um, changed how we engage and trying to build them back up, especially the Students of Color Coalition at PNCA as well as trying to start off a neurodivergent student union as well. Um, so working on that and I'm finding student interest already and we have our club fair tomorrow. So if there are if your students at PNCA and looking to join clubs, you better make it there tomorrow. Um, and then finally, I'm also on the Students of Concern team. So I get to um, help students with uh, different kinds of concerns in terms of belonging and inclusion and connecting them to different resources on campus and also being able to share my own experience as um, a woman of color and an international student who did all of her um, college and grad school in Portland. So I like have a lot of experiences that I bring to the table through that. Finally, in terms of community and belonging, working on social. So I know Kelvin already talked about the transfer student and first gen student socials. So I'm working on that, but for all the different groups, including our non-traditional students, um, trying to work on a Rocky Horror movie night for uh, through the Queer Student Union. So those are some of the projects I've been working on, um, as well as finding ways for our different affinity groups to network and find community within PNC and Willamette, as well as within the bigger Portland area through career services. Um, and then finally, uh, the student affairs newsletter that I call my baby. Uh, I just, I spend er, any time I'm like, oh, I want to take a five minute break from emails. I'm going to add something to the newsletter and make it pretty. So I've been, I call the newsletter my baby. I, I've been putting a lot of effort into it, but I feel like it's really helping our students know what's going on at PNC uh, because there's so much great stuff happening. We had a fashion show today where all the students wore items of clothing made out of cardboard as part of their class. Like every day there's something cool and exciting. So this is just a way for us to get that word out. So tell your students to read through it and not miss it. Hi hey everyone, my name is Jody Santilli. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Engagement and Leadership. So I work um, in the same space as Lisa. And I'm here to share some opportunities for your students to get involved um, through our office. First of which is as we associate students of Willamette University, our student government, they still have openings to serve on committees. So if that is something that your students are interested in, I definitely recommend um, checking that out. Um, we also have fraternities and sororities that are currently hosting events and recruiting new members. Uh, we have the Willamette Events Board, which is a programming board that I oversee, and we are currently hiring general event planners. So if your students are, were those people that were on like, uh, you know, student government or student um, planning boards in high school, um, that's definitely a place for them to be able to continue to do that work and to get paid a leadership award to do so. So that application is currently on handshake. The Willamette Dance Company is holding auditions for their December show. So if dance is something your students are interested in, recommend checking them out. They're a student club. And speaking of student clubs, we just had our activities expo on Monday. So our student clubs were out tabling. So hopefully your students went and got to see all of the over uh, 80 clubs that were represented there. Um, and if they saw, didn't see something that they were interested in, they can start a student club. And there's more information about how to do that on the student engagement and leadership website. And they can also stop by um, our office and talk to me about what that process looks like in order to get a club started. I know that there was uh, questions about, you know, introverted students and how to get them involved. I think twofold, I think clubs is a great place to start because there's definitely some clubs that are, you know, for folks that are not necessarily looking to be like constantly extroverted and doing um, lots of things and being around tons of people. Um, and so finding those clubs that feel like a good fit for them. And, you know, if that means checking out, you know, a few different meetings and, and there's no like 
obligation to return um, if it feels like it's not the right fit. Um, and then additionally, um, the Willamette Events Board as their advisor, um, I am working with them to make sure that at least one of our programs um, a month is something that feels like someone who might be a little more introverted could go to without feeling overwhelmed. And so whether it's like something where they come together as a group, but it's an individual sort of thing where they're focused on a task by themselves, or if it's something like just sitting and, and watching a movie together. So making sure that, the, that we're creating space as a larger programming um, entity on campus for, for those introverted students. In order for students to find out what's going on, like Calvin mentioned, checking your Woo email. There's a lot of information, important information that goes out in that. Um, Willamette also has a daily email newsletter today at Willamette that has um, information in there. Our office oversees the toilet paper, which is a bathroom stall newsletter that we put up um, a, a couple times a month that has a lot of information about what's coming um, out of our office and other offices that share that information with us. Um, there are posters constantly posted around campus because every time we survey students to ask how they find out about stuff, they mention posters and flyers is one of the number one things. So we will continue to post posters and flyers for ourselves and other uh, groups that come in and ask us to do so. Um, the, pro the events board, like I um, mentioned above, has a texting service. And so especially for our larger scale programs, um, if students sign up for that service, we'll send out a text reminder um, about upcoming events. Most of our events are hosted on Fridays, but occasionally a Thursday, Saturday, just depends. Uh, TravelSalem.com has information about what to do in our community of Salem. Um, and so that's a great place to check out um, events off campus. Um, and then lastly, first year students are in a chase session every Monday um, with their colloquium associate and campus partners, um, a lot of which are in this call. Um, and so that's a great place for announcements to be made about upcoming events as well for students to get involved in. Hello, I'm Tony Stafford. I'm the Director of Campus Recreation. I go be he, him, his pronouns. I was lucky enough to interact with uh, many of the first year students through our Jumpstart. Uh, stepping out pre-orientation program. We had over 60 or around 60 student participants in that program this year, which was a success. I think really helped students uh, acclimate to the university and transition that way. Um, as part of uh, campus recreation, some of our goals are definitely to help students with their health and well-being throughout this uh, first semester and the transition, trying to make sure, making sure that they're uh, building time in for uh, themselves to help out with their uh, mental health and just taking care of themselves through this process. We also utilize a lot of our resources in campus recreation to help out with uh, them finding a community of friends through engagement and a variety of activities. And that starts with our Sparks Center, which we have in there as our fitness center. We also have our uh, pool and Hinkle and Sparks Field and tennis courts. Now, a lot of these spaces, our hours are marked on the doors. They're also on our website. Um, when athletics is using some of those spaces, mostly the, the pool and Hinkle and Sparks Field, they're not able to utilize those at that time, but they can utilize the spaces before and or after. Um, we have equipment that can be rented in the pool area as well as in the Hinkle gym for basketballs and volleyballs and letting people come in and have kind of open recreation in all those spaces. And they can also use Sparks Field to kick the soccer ball, kick the soccer ball around or just kind of work out in that space as well. We also have intramurals like this evening, for example, out here in Brownfield, we have our four on four volleyball league that just kicked off tonight. We have about uh, four to six teams, I believe, and students can get involved with either um, signing up with a group of friends or they can also sign up as an individual and we can assign them to a team. Um, so we will offer four uh, leagues this semester. We have basketball, we have volleyball, we have soccer, and then um, might be doing flag football to be determined. Then we also do some one day tournaments. Uh, we've had uh, lawn game tournaments so far up to this point. We have had, uh, we're going to have a badminton tournament. We'll have a dodgeball tournament and a kickball tournament. So again, people can sign up either as a team or they can sign up as an individual and be put on a team. So that's a, a way for students to engage. 
we have some uh, competitive sports clubs. Uh, it's, it's one level down from athletics. Students will have clubs that like soccer, rugby, ultimate frisbee, badminton, and volleyball. Um, basketball might be starting this semester where students that want to compete against other universities or compete in other adult leagues in the area where they have more, more uh, official practice times and they're more dedicated to the sport. Um, we allow them to have access, uh, like uh, reserve like the Sparks Field and the gym so they can practice and pr be prepared for their competition. So that's another way of joining into the recreation realm. And lastly, one of our most popular areas is our outdoor program um, for both trips and for equipment rentals. Uh, for the rental, students can come into the space. They can they can go as an individual or as a group and rent like camping equipment, tents, sleeping bags, uh, snowshoe equipment, um, really anything and everything. We got paddle boards and kayaks so people can get outside on their own through those rentals or they can sign up for a trip. We have uh, some of the things that Kelvin talked about, just like offering trips to a variety of locations, some to the coast, some to the mountains. We also do some urban settings with like ice skating, as well as like indoor rock climbing. And we're actually going to an indoor archery place uh, towards the end of the semester. So we're trying to offer uh, a depth and breadth of opportunities to get people connected with friends. Most of our trips are around 11 students. So it's a small space where people can engage and uh, really get to know each other and really kind of get off campus every now and then if that's something that they desire. And we also offer um, kind of how-to clinics. So if students want to learn to do a little bit of, uh, do some things on their own, we're offering three paddle boarding clinics this semester, once a month where people can come to the pool and learn to, to paddle on a paddle board. We also offer in like how to cooking clinics, how to like uh, build fires. So then if people want to start to explore the outdoors as an option for themselves for their hobby, we can kind of help them build their skill sets to do that. And if there's anybody with questions around campus recreation, feel free to email campusrec-info at willamette.edu. We'll pass it off to the next person. There we go. Thank you, Tony. And hello to everyone. Uh, welcome. I am the Reverend Ianita Adesanya, and um, students call me Ianita. I have one student that calls me Pearl, which is my middle name, and which is totally okay. I am um, pleased to introduce you to the Office of, of Spiritual and Religious Life. Um, I like to say that we, we are a space wherever we are for well-being and connection. And um, we serve the entire university, um, all students, staff, faculty, and alumni uh, with programming um, specific to the, those demographics. And um, to engage with us, there is no requirement. And so we're, we're, um, our hope is to be welcoming to all individuals involved with Willamette um, with regards to purpose, meaning, worldview. Uh, there is no requirement for spiritual orientation of any sort or faith tradition of any kind. Um, a few things I'd like to um, just note at the bottom of the slide, um, those are some ex um, ex examples of reasons why folks might attend or come to events sponsored by the Office of Spiritual and Religious Life, which we also call SRL, um, or come and talk to me as their university chaplain. So um, assistance or, or, or curiosity around spiritual and religious life or ethical life, um, but also um, my office um, covers areas around the topic uh, topics that fit under social justice um, and, and, personal, in, and personal and interpersonal relations and values clarification. Some examples of um, some social justice programming that we did last year and hope to do more of this year include, we had a, a series on reckoning with racism um, that included um, three films and discussions, one around the doctrine of discovery, one around uh, Japanese-American incarceration camps, 
Another around um, the topic of from titled from lynching to capital punishment. Um, we are also this year hosting the Martin Luther King um, celebration and activities. Willamette has been has traditionally had a, a fairly robust celebration around the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, holiday. That will include a speaker, um, a, probably a book club. It will also include a, a community service project that has been um, titled Into the Streets. And this is an activity that is um, um, also uh, that we have high participation and leadership coming out of the SEAL office, uh, SEAL office's community service learning team. And so, um, and, and one that I understand the community looks forward to, um, you know, pre-COVID. Pre and so I'm looking forward to re-engaging uh, Wu with the, with the surrounding community in that service project. Some of the, a few other things I'll mention and then I'll move on is that we also offer on-campus programming on all the, both campuses um, is the goal. Right now we have um, pretty healthy uh, programming on the Salem campus and three schools, that being CAS and, and uh, grad, the two grad schools. We have meditation series. And so um, both daily and weekly, I or someone from one of the students have trained from my office will lead a meditation series um, in various portions of the camp on various portions of the campus, and we will we plan to be at PNC soon. Um, we also have something called Convo, um, which stands for convocation, and it most frequently takes the uh, form of a conversation. Um, some topics that we're looking at uh, for this year include social media etiquette. Uh, we are planning a session on eco-spirituality. That one is actually planned for PNCA. Um, and we also have one uh, that is in the works around the topic of queer theology. And so that's, oh, and one last thing, my office oversees um, of the many, many, many student groups available to your students, my office oversees and supports those um, that um, identify as spiritual and or religious student groups. And currently we have active uh, two Christian groups. One is InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. The other is Campus Ambassadors. And then we also have a very active Jewish Student Union um, and just recently, within the past month, I was able to recruit. And so we're in the process, uh, process of reactivating our Muslim Students Association and our Buddhist Students Association. And um, as students identify themselves, we're very much open to supporting additional new student clubs that have an identity around spirituality or religion. Thank you. And I think the next person would be Lisa Logan, welcome. Thanks so much, Anita. I'm really loving listening to what you all are up to too, it's exciting. Um, so I'm Lisa Logan and I use they, them, their pronouns. I'm the very new director of the Gender Resource and Advocacy Center or what students call the GRAC um, and I'm the confidential advocate as well. I just started at Willamette on June 27th and I'm really excited to connect with all of you. It was really nice to see you during opening days and moving day, move in day. Um, I'm passionate about the work I'll be doing in this role too. So I've really also enjoyed the connections I've already been able to make with your students. And in the GRAC, uh, we really strive to create an empowering space. We promote gender equity inclusivity and intersectional social justice by supporting systemic change through education and collaboration. So we provide support and resources primarily around sexuality, gender identity, um, but we're staffed by the director and confidential advocate myself and then the sexual assault response advocate coordinators or the Sarah's and the Sarah coordinators. Um, and we have two student advocacy coordinators, an LGBTQ plus resource coordinator and a sexual health resource specialist. Um, we also typically have a, a liaison for equity and empowerment that works in conjunction with us and the Office for Multicultural Affairs. 
So um, our staff and student advocates are trained and certified, and we support victims and survivors of sexual assault, sexual harassment, stalking, dating violence in choosing the path that's right for them. So um, we have these, you know, these resources and we have uh, specialists that can be found in the GRAC. So we're committed to responding to and recognizing and advocating for gender and sexuality justice, in addition to building a community around these issues. We're open to all members of the Willamette University community. And um, as I said, one of our main goals is to ensure that resources and support are accessible for everyone, all Willamette students. So um, I really look forward to talking with you anytime and I'll put my email in the chat and I can pass it over to the next person. Hello, my name is Eric Thomas. I use he, him pronouns. I am the general manager for Bon Appetit uh, here at Willamette. Uh, we're the food service partner on the Salem campus. Uh, it's my first year here, um, really enjoying it. It's beautiful, uh, students have been wonderful. Um, our main goal is to make sure that the students are nourished and have everything they need to focus on what it takes to be successful. Um, we strive to work with all dietary needs to make sure that no matter what the situation, no matter what you may be allergic to or um, different diets that they might be on, um, that they will find something to eat. Um, if they can't or they feel that it's difficult, we encourage them to come speak to us. Um, we want them to know that um, the most important job that we have isn't just making food, but it's keeping everyone safe. Um, and it is being there for those students who might have special needs or requests and are uncomfortable. Um, you know, maybe they haven't found their voice yet or they're a little shy. Uh, we want them to know that they can come to us. They can meet with me privately. They can meet with the chef privately or my assistant GM. Um, we'll develop a relationship with them. And, you know, if someone really has some strong needs, it could get to the point where they can just come into the cafe, the supervisor will recognize them, and they don't have to make a big fuss. We'll just know to walk up to them, speak with them, find out um, if they're having trouble finding something that day or what their needs might be. Um, we have a few fun things going on. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm brand new to the school. Um, and with COVID, there's a lot of things that were shut down that we're going to bring back. Um, one thing is pop-ups. We're going to do pop-ups every, every other Wednesday to begin. Um, and what that will look like is one of our, our chefs will basically design a really fun menu that has nothing to do with what's being served in the food hall that day. And it's essentially having like a little pop-up or a little food cart of their own for the day. Um, so they're really excited about that. And certain things we have on the menu are uh, yakisoba. Um, we're going to do... Um, really famous jerk chicken, one of our cooks, Hopeton. Uh, he used to run a little spot called Cat Cavern um, and the jerk chicken was extremely popular. I've heard a lot about that. So we're gonna, he's gonna do a pop-up. Um, and there's a lot of different things that different chefs specialize in that they're gonna showcase. So that's one thing we're gonna do um, for fun. Um, and yeah, like I said, we're, we're here for the students. We more than anything, just want them to be comfortable. Um, and if you would like to see what we're serving each day, uh, you can just search Willamette, Bon Appetit at Willamette University. Uh, it'll come up to the Bon Appetit site. On there, it shows our daily menus. Um, you can read a little bit more about the staff. And if you go towards the bottom, you can sign up for menu mail, which will generate an automatic email to you every morning so you can see uh, the offerings uh, for the students. Um, and I'm open to any questions at all. Please feel free to reach out. Um, we really, really want to engage with the students and the parents and make sure that everyone's feeling really comfortable with what they're dining, what they're dining on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. And thank you to all the panelists. I just want to quickly recap that I heard connection, engaging, excitement, learning, belonging, outings, community. I heard a lot of opportunity. I heard a lot of support. And I know that you all have um, questions. And so I'll go um, to the Q&A just to ask some of those. 
Um, there was a hand raised earlier by Troy. I don't know, Troy, if you're still on um, or have typed that question in the, in the Q&A. Um, so there's a question regarding future class options. Um, it says, we were told this was a very large incoming class and under normal some circumstances, students have been, have to be flexible with their choices. Is there a collective hope that professors and the university understand this issue and will work with students? Um, are we thinking about having to open more class sections or will students have to join current openings? Um, yes, certainly we want students to be able to get the classes that they want and are interested in. We want them to be able to explore the different electives that they want. And so I think this is something that the faculty, uh, the academic side of the house is looking at um, whether that's with existing faculty or, or beefing up our a lecturer pool. Um, I can try to get more information on that, but hopefully that, that answers some of that. Um, I know that there are some of my colleagues typing in some of the short answers to some of the questions, um, but Eric, I wanna ask the question to you, will Kaneko serve food at any point this year? So we are offering breakfast right now. Um, we are not doing equivalencies like we're doing at Blitz which means um, for lunch, if a student is in a hurry or is not that hungry, they can go to Blitz and they can get a sandwich or a salad with protein uh, with chips and a cookie or fruit with a drink in place of their meal swipe. Um, we're not offering that, we're offering um, just grab and go um, for flex points or for cash or credit card. Um, the thing with Kaneko is we need to see enough business in order to keep it open and then to expand it. Um, and right now we're only seeing about 10 students a day on average. Um, so that's not exactly where we need to be. So I can't speak for the whole year, but for this semester, I know we won't be accepting points um, and we need to evaluate um, the situation with the school uh, to make it make financial sense to, to open it um, up even more. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Um, there is a question about uh, planning for the end of the semester. So looking ahead to winter break and when finals, um, when finals might be concluded. In the chat, I put a link to our academic calendar. So that has all of the dates, um, for example, holidays or different closures that we have, um, fall, you know, fall break, uh, different things like that. But connect with your student to ask them exactly when their class might end. Maybe their last class meeting is a little bit earlier than final exams, um, or if they're working an on-campus job that works all the way through to the end of the semester. Um, make sure you just double check with your student to see when their true last date is. But I've put the academic calendar in the chat. Um, let's go to, let's see. Um, Lisa Holiday, anything, or Jody, anything you can tell us about parents and family weekend in October? Yeah, um, so I was hoping to get this schedule launched today, but there was a few last minute changes that had to happen. So fingers crossed by the end of this week. Um, for travel purposes though, check-in starts at 12 p.m. on Friday, October 7th. The first event is the GRAC Open House, and that starts at two o'clock. Um, and then there are events that are happening at three o'clock and five o'clock on that Friday. Um, and the last event that is on the schedule for Sunday, October 9th, is is the men's soccer game, which starts at 2.30. Um, so if you're looking to book flights, um, those are the two things to keep in mind. So check-in starts at noon on October 7th. And the last event on the schedule is the men's soccer game at 2.30 on October 9th. Thank you so much. Um, we do have a few, a couple of questions about moving out of the residence halls. Um, Heather, do you wanna talk about moving out for winter break, how that's communicated, and as, as well as moving out for the end of the school year in the spring. Yeah, I was going to post a few links in the chat. We have everything on our housing calendar that's listed there, so we will have options for some students to live um, with us over what we call winter break, so after fall semester ends. It's mostly students who have kitchens within their residence hall spaces, and we plan to send this communication out um, to all of our students within the next 
I think by the um, beginning of October, we'll be sending this to them. And I'll put that link in the chat so you can see specific things. Um, a lot of times we get questions about do students have to like physically move everything out of their spaces? That is not like they just have to vacate the residence halls after their finals are over and they um, are more than happy to come back. They can just leave everything there. They just have to take their key and ID with them. Um, we also encourage them to take um, personable items. There's uh, We do checks within our residence halls to make sure that everything um, is going to be okay to make sure that our refrigerators are unplugged and all those kinds of things. So it's only professional staff that are going into them, but I always encourage people not to leave things in their residence hall spaces um, for a longer period of time. And at the end of the year, um, it's a, it's the Friday and Saturday of um, after their last, after the finals week, that's when our students would be moving out unless they are a senior, which none of your students are. So, um, but I will send links, I'll put links in the chat here so you have them specifically. Um, and there's lots of questions around uh, dining and stuff. So Eric, if you want to put um, a great way to connect with you in the chat, we're getting to close to the end of our time. Um, I know that there are folks who are answering questions uh, in the Q&A and a request to answer the question around Kaneko dining in the Q&A. So if my colleagues can please help me with that, um, let's do that while we wrap up and I'll turn it back over to Eric. All right. Thanks so much, Oli, and all of our panelists this evening for sharing this information with us today. Hopefully our audience found this valuable and informative. And as you can see on your screen, there are contact for um, our panelists this evening. And you're also always willing or always welcome to reach out to me at elasan.willamette.edu. To all of you, thanks again for joining us this evening. If you'd like to reach out to a specific administrator from this evening's session. We'll follow up with contact information if you don't catch the, their email address from the screen, um, and we'll send out an email, email survey uh, tomorrow. So thanks again, everyone, and please take care. <laughs>